hurdle with this project from the beginning has been trying to figure out how to assemble all of the pieces together. And it's extremely difficult to do that with 3D printed parts because they don't have the same tolerances of a CNC part, which is the ideal final production method, which is what this is. Now that I have the actual CNC components, I can test to make sure my assembly works. There's a case back, which looks like this, and the main part of the case. These two sandwich together like this, the movement holder. These four little golden pins poke through the back. The two holes correspond to these two pins on the case back, and they go together like that. So it acts as a registration mark so that the movement holder doesn't rotate around so that the movement stays in place. I then take my makeshift 3D printed dial that I sanded so carefully and just place it on the movement like this. But one thing I forgot to do before I put the makeshift dial on there is to put the stem in the movement holder and then put the crown on the stem. All right, so here's the stem. Here is the crown. So the crown does have an insane amount of detail, way more than you would get with an FDM part. I was using those manufacturing methods to come up with the prototypes. This one is CNC machined, so it's got an insane amount of detail. Overall, the first CNC part turned out amazing, way better than I was expecting, but the crown is a little bit cracked. That leads to the issue where the crown and the stem are a little bit looser than I would like. I, know, I gotta figure that out. I'll just leave that task for later. I'd want to put the stem into this little groove that I designed. You can then put the main part of the case on top. Actually, no, no, I'm confusing myself. So you put the main part of the case on like that first because there's a hole that is where you slide the stem in and then you put the hands on and the crystal gasket and the crystal and you put the watch crown on the stem and then you have a working watch. But somehow I have to get from here to there. All right, so after a couple hours yesterday of trying to figure out how to put the hands on and the back of the case, it's looking pretty good. I'm kind of surprised at how good it looks and like the hands move, that's crazy. Um, I didn't think that would work the first time. It is looking a little bit janky. I dropped a screw on the carpet. Um, can't find it. The dial is also looking a little bit makeshifty just because it is 3D printed. But now comes the fun part of putting the crystal on top um, right here. I watched a few YouTube videos about it, mainly from Rotate Watches. It seems a little bit 
tricky. They use their palm to just press down on the crystal. That seems really difficult. I have a special tool that I'm gonna use for that. All right, so this is the special tool that I'm going to be using. This is a heat press machine. I specifically got it a couple years ago to do leather work to emboss my logo. Now, it's really just a good tool to press down vertically. Obviously, I'm not gonna use the heat source. I think that'll be easier than just doing it with my palm, but I guess I'll find out. Okay, so I attached the crown to the stem with some super glue. Rotate Watches did that with super glue in their video as well. I feel like it's a little bit odd. I think typically you would want to screw the crown into the stem, but since the taps are so small, I think that would cost a lot of money to manufacture. I tried, couldn't figure that out, so this is where I'm at right now. Um, it fits, it works, so I'm happy about it. The hands are moving, which means that I added enough clearance between the top of the second hand and the bottom of the crystal. And nothing is, like, moving. I mean, this is a fully functional watch. And it's even a little bit water resistant because I added a case back gasket and a crystal gasket. Now, of course, it is still a little bit of a DIY kind of makeshifty looking watch. I mean, the dial, is 3D printed and sanded. The hands are looking a little bit rusty because I left them in the case for a couple months too long. The case back is obviously still missing that screw. Honestly, at this point, this is the first like actual CNC prototype that I've gotten from this entire project. I'm really happy with how it's turned out so far. And I think I'm just gonna keep it like this for now. Now I could always upgrade the parts, of course. Like this is a plastic ABS CNC case. I could go for a 316 stainless steel case, which is most common for metal watches, and that would feel heavier. It would feel more premium overall, but that costs more money, and I don't want to do that right now. By the way, if you watched the entire series, first of all, thank you, but also this was never meant to be a tutorial series. It's supposed to be a watch me figure out how to do it series. And honestly, like I think it ended up being kind of successful. And I am by no means a watch expert. I know almost nothing about watches. And I was able to pull something kind of half decent together, but that's the end of the series. If you want to follow me on Instagram, I might post some stuff about upgrades to the watch in the future, um, but yeah, thanks for watching and See ya.